to tonight and the campaign, Donald Trump Jr. Good to see you. Good to be here. You were just saying, could you have imagined a few weeks ago that this is the situation your father went up with against 16 yeah. heavyweights, not not lightweights. 100%. Listen, I think everyone thought that the Republicans would be fighting this thing out till the end of July, the convention was going to be a disaster, all of this, and the Democrats were going to get their ducks in a row, uh, and exactly the opposite's happened. So we're just very excited about it. Uh, the party's coming into line now very well, and you know we're finally letting the will of the people be heard. Listen, you got to follow, follow Donald J. Trump's timeline in real time, and he just tweeted out, uh -oh. it looks, well, not bad. No, not, it's okay, not yeah. a retweet. I know the yeah. family worries about retweets. Uh, I look so forward to debating crooked Hillary Clinton. Uh, Democratic primaries are rigged. Email investigation is rigged. So time to get it on. She, he's right about the, the Democratic system being rigged. If I'm Bernie Sanders and I win West Virginia by, what, 15, 16 points? Mm -hmm. And he got one more delegate than Hillary. Well, they're, they're both rigged. I mean, I think the Democratic yeah. side's actually substantially worse than the oh, Republican. So but, much know, worse. We had the same thing in Pennsylvania, right? You could have won every GOP primary voter in Pennsylvania, and you get 17 of 72. I mean, it, it's, it's a little ridiculous. It, I think, yeah, you get 17 of 72, but that was the one area where you guys really had the great ground game. Correct. And that made a big difference. And then when the, winning Indiana, that was game over. A hundred percent. And listen, we, we, the team's evolved, right? We're new at politics. I joke, I've been in politics for three weeks. We figured it out pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. What we've done is historic. It's not a campaign, it's a movement. You know, people are getting it. People are buying into it. They understand it. They're passionate about it. And so, you know, that's really shown. And I think now, again, we're running a great campaign. I think we're going to do phenomenally. Let me, let me show you the headline. Crossing the line, how Donald Trump behaved with women in private. I have now interviewed four women. Mm -hmm. Carrie Prejean will be on. She's former Miss California. She was yeah. in the Miss USA contest. Uh, she was on my radio show today. She was livid that they mischaracterized how she feels about Donald Trump. Yeah. She's supporting him. She wants an apology from the New York Times. She said this was purposely distorted. And when they called her, she said, I have nothing bad to say about Trump. And they still took it out of context. Well, I mean, it was such a hit. I mean, they're basically the number one surrogate for Hillary Clinton. I right. mean, they're no longer media. I mean, it, it's so biased, it's ridiculous at this point. I mean, they're not reporters. They're just doing whatever they want to perpetuate the left agenda. It's insane. I mean, same with Roland Brewer. They're, Wait a second. I said this, but in the context of this, they didn't include it. All of these people, and by the way, not just random people in the story, right? They said, quote, unquote, interviewed 50 people. They quoted four, yeah. and the four that they quoted are now coming out and saying, wait a minute, this isn't what we said. That's like we had it's on your so father's phony. own girlfriend. It was amazing. And she's like, I love Donald. He was a gentleman. He was the nicest guy. Yeah. What they said is false. They didn't print all the good things I said about no, him. No, it, it's insane. I mean, in the end, what I, what I got out of it is say, well, Donald Trump used to, when he was single, he liked good-looking women. I mean, I, wow, that's a big shocker. You know, <laughs> un unlike any other male in America. I mean, you know, who, it is it, pretty it's funny. so stupid and so biased that if that's all they have, uh, I'm pretty excited because th that's really lightweight let, stuff. Let me go to this, this Kentucky race. It's like now it's a 1,700-vote uh, difference. Yes. She, she's not winning. She Correct. can't close. This, and think about this. A 74-year-old, angry, bitter, socialist curmudgeon yes. from Vermont. She was supposed to run away with this thing. Who was an independent, by the way, you know, a, a year A socialist, ago, right? yeah. I, I mean, a democratic socialist. socialist. So, yeah. Yeah, it, it's incredible. I mean, I think it shows the real weakness of her campaign. Now, we understand there's a machine there. There's this. There's everyone on the Democratic side backing it. But the people get it. She's not likable. There's nothing that she's done that makes her likable. She's not going to get those independent voters. She's not a person that's going to be charismatic enough to get people to motivate, to come out and vote. I think that bodes very well for us. We're excited yeah. to run against her. You no, know, it's interesting how big the issue of immigration has become in this campaign. We went back. We got a sound of Bill Clinton. It's the 1996 State of the Union. Tell me if this sounds a little bit like somebody close to you in your life. Let's roll the tape. There are some areas that the federal government should not lead and should address and address strongly. One of these areas is the problem of illegal immigration. This administration has taken a strong stand to stiffen the protection of our borders. We are increasing border controls by 50 percent. We are increasing inspections to prevent the hiring of illegal immigrants. And tonight I announce I will sign an executive order to deny federal contracts to businesses that hire illegal immigrants. We should honor every legal immigrant here working hard to be a good citizen, working hard to become a new citizen. But we are also a nation of laws. Now here, I think, is why this resonates so much. Because Republicans have said it, Democrats have said it, Democrats want a, a voting constituency for generations. Republicans, historically, they wanted the cheap labor. 
for the big business buddies, mm -hmm. your dad's going to build that wall if he gets elected. He is, and it's really what the irony of all of that whole quote is, it just goes to show you the typical hypocrisy in the Democratic Party, right? It's always do as I say, not as I actually do, right? Whatever is convenient at the time to win these things. It's, it's really a shame. And again, as a business guy, I could take you know, advantage of that cheap labor, but what that cheap labor does, it undercuts hardworking Americans. It undercuts their wages. And think of African-American youth and the all-time high unemployment that we had after you know, this president who's supposed to be doing so much for them. We have all-time high unemployment in those demographics. Because and those are the people being lie. hurt. And your, your father has said this. You know, we hear unemployment numbers are going down. They're not going down. No, listen, we stopped I, counting I, I, yeah. We stopped counting because he's been looking for work for six months. He can't find it. Congratulations. You're now no longer looking for work. Wait no. a minute. I work. I want to work. don't count you in the unemployment it, It's number. such a fake artificial. And that's what everyone does. That's All of listen, it today is padded statistics. We have statistics. millions more in poverty, millions more on food stamps. Uh, we have the highest labor, lowest labor participation rate in 40 years. We've doubled the debt. Median income down uh, about five thousand dollars a family. Home ownership at a record low. And how do you run as Hillary's running on that record? Because she has supported Obama on all of those things. I guess you promise everything you know to everyone that you can't possibly deliver, and then you deal yeah. with it you know in eight years. It's it's ridiculous, and that's what we're talking about. We're talking about giving jobs back to Americans, letting Americans prosper again, letting them succeed. You know, my father's doing this not because he has to. He doesn't need this. He could sit back and play golf for the rest of his life. He's doing this because he wants to give the same opportunities that he's been able to have as a family, as a business, as an entrepreneur, to everyone else you in America you know who's what, been starved from these you things. You know what shaped me in my life is two decades of my life, one decade in the restaurant business and one decade in the construction business. And if I didn't do all those jobs, I knew what it was like when the economy went yeah. south and, and the phone stopped ringing as often as you needed to mm -hmm. ring to keep the people working for you working. Um, who do you like for VP? I don't know. Listen, I, th I think we want someone who probably has some of that D.C. experience. I mean, I think we're not naive. We don't have the hubris to assume that we know everything. We need someone who can help us navigate those waterways. So that's going to be important. But, you know, th there's a list that we have to go through, and there's a lot of people on it, and we got to really see what's the right fit for my You're father. You're not going to give me one clue as oh, to who's on Oh, come on. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> come on. Yeah, you're good for I ratings. Your dad, good I, for I, for uh, I did. All right. Um, what do you like? Do you like the concept, and I asked your dad about this when he was on last time, a team of rivals. In other words, Announce your vice president. Announce Rudy Giuliani's position, Chris Christie's position, uh, Rick Perry, Bobby Jindal, Scott Walker, Jan Brewer, and you, you have a team. Well, so of I think a lot of those people, maybe not all, but I think a lot of those people yeah. could definitely be involved and would be. And I, I, listen, I like it conceptually because I think yeah. it shows, hey, this is what we're going to do. This Here are the people's positions. It's real. It's not you know pie in the sky. And I think those people and certain of them certainly have track records that you could say, hey, this is the guy that should be doing that job, and he do a phenomenal job. So uh, I. I certainly like the concept. We got to obviously work on what the list is and who we want to go out with. And some of it, again, it does have to be on the fly. Like, just like a business, you can't just plan for something two years in advance. You have to yeah. sort of see what the situation is at the time and see who's going to be the right person what at the time. What do you make of Mitt Romney, Ben Sass, Bill Kristol, and the talk of a third party? Which, I mean, why would they want to hand the election to Hillary Clinton? Yeah. Well, I love all these quote unquote true conservatives yeah. basically saying oh, we'd rather have Hillary Clinton. I mean, it shows how true their convictions are. Honestly, they mm -hmm. sound like spoiled babies. You know, mm -hmm. they didn't get what they want, they couldn't close when they had their opportunity. Opportunity. So now we're gonna, you know, we're gonna take our toys and go home. And they're mad at the people because this was a record voting year. Well, they're, ma they're mad at the people because they can't believe that the people aren't in line with their thoughts, as opposed to what it, the way it's supposed to be, which is they should be in line with the people. 65%. They care more about themselves than the people, and that's that's what we're trying to change. Sixty-five percent of Republicans feel betrayed by the Republican Party. You know, I, last I'm gonna run through this list because I made a list about the promises your dad has made with interviews. Mm -hmm. You really believe he can balance the budget? I do. Do you, and he will build that Listen, wall. it's waste, fraud, and abuse. The one thing that none of these guys have ever done is run a business. You can't have my father's track record of success, the continued success over 40 years, mm -hmm. building jobs. You were in construction. You know how difficult that is, right? Sure. People will take advantage of you when they can. And he hired union and, labor and, in and New York. And he did that he with union. He did it, you know, yeah. He's able to make those things work, but he's also able to see when there's nonsense, when there's people taking advantage, and he's going to call them out on it. These other guys, they're playing with funny money. They've never had to do it themselves, well, so they're just, hey, I'd spend. What difference does it make if, if a hammer if costs $500? If his agenda is to, to balance a budget, to build the wall, repeal Obamacare, health savings accounts, make America energy independent, destroy ISIS, rebuild the military, help vets, and Common Core. How do you argue that's not conservative? Even I understand populist, nationalist, but those things are conservative. It's a very that's good question, I Sean. I have no idea, and that's why yeah. I don't understand the mess. But it, it does actually lead me to understand why those guys were ineluctable in their yeah. own way. Right? They're, they're unelectable because they didn't get that. They no. didn't know how to deliver that. They weren't comfortable in their own skin. And, you know, that typical conservative dictum of you have to be all 10,000 of these things or you can't be a true conservative, 
you know, that's, also that's not the way the average amendment. that's not the way the average american thinks you know there, there's Economy people in talks. the middle so why don't we nurture bringing in the people that we've brought into this party i mean just for a primary i mean look at states like pennsylvania 100,000 people switched over from independent or democrat to vote for my father like i can't imagine as a business guy or even now as a politician for the last two and a half weeks not nurturing that I, and welcoming that influence i'm going to be incredible. the first to ask this are you ever going to get into politics i, 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 I said got you got a long got way to go i got some stuff i have to do in my career but you know maybe it's, <laughs> it, it, it's fascinating especially it when I look at some of the guys in there, I was like, I think I could do a lot better job than most I've of these guys. I've said that many a night here. Uh, you, said, you have. You have. I've heard friend. that a lot from you. You're my number one uh, surrogate as it relates to my potential political oh, no, career. I have Sean. a plan for you, but I'm not uh, going to discuss it publicly. All right. I appreciate it. Quick programming note. Tune in tomorrow night, 10 Eastern, right here. Donald Jr.'s dad, Donald Trump, will be our guest. That's tomorrow night at 10. Coming up.